I'll believe you. So one day, I know this is not going to be possible because it is, and nothing can happen without God. So God showed me, how can I, what will I be telling them? But I know I love fish ever since I was small. So I made up my mind, okay, God, I want you to do something for me. Let me make sure that everything I do is focused on you. So one day, I just sat down. Uh, cameraman, you can focus on this again. 3.54 p.m. in the afternoon, though. 2 1 1996. Now, Ikeja. Now, this Ikeja I'm talking about is a place given to us, the house girl's room. Thank God my wife is there. We were cooking in the toilet. The toilet, the bedroom, the kitchen is in the same place. That's when I knew that if you don't want poo smell, if you don't want it to show up in your, in your food, cook rice first. Because the smell of rice used to absorb what you think. It was in that room. We are staying with the house help of some Indians in Ikeja. That's where I wrote this. And what did I write? I said, covenant with God. I said, racing under a prophetic unction in obedience. Lord Jesus, the vision, the goal that will tell me what actions to take, the priorities to face at each phase of the plan that will make me know how, when, with whom, and what it will cost during the implementation. An evaluation that will cause men to say, ah, this is the living testimony of the gospel. I commit them to you now, knowing fully well that I can do and achieve nothing of my own. I deliberately and consciously decide to obey your voice concerning what steps to take part time henceforth. You have the absolute right to do what you like with the results of the above. Having definitely relinquished all that I am and have, they are no longer mine but God's. And if at any time you should call upon me to completely forsake what I have renounced, I must do it with gladness and joy in complete fulfillment and obedience to your word in Matthew 22, 33, uh, 22 37. Thou shalt love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all thy mind. The first and great commandment. I wrote this 2 1, 1996. As if the Holy Ghost was happy. That was January. Feb March. Come back again. You know, this is, I said, example. March. The Jaku Jaku sheet of paper. I tried to search for some of these things yesterday. March 1996. During the service, you see, I wrote C-A-B here. Are you getting me? Now, I said, C-A-B. God said, look, after the order of David that gave what he has to the Lord to build church, another, another sort of temple, now he starts temple now. I will call it Chronicles Aquaculture Blessing. Aquaculture to remind me is fish. Blessing to show that I am blessed to bless others. Even if I'm poor, just make other people rich first. And that's how the journey started. This is 1996. Now, let's see what happened a year later when I wrote this. Quickly. Now, okay. I was in a service. I was in a service at the National Stadium. You know, some church advertised on TV, just like you have, and say, come for, uh, let's say, night time or thereabouts, a time to be with the Lord. Now, look at what I wrote here. December 97, 11, 10 p.m., in the cold. My eyes just saw this while I was reading my Bible. He said, for I will promote thee unto very great honor, and do whatsoever you say unto me. I said, What? Do you see how 1 Corinthians 2.10 makes you to understand some things? This is funny now. This is number 22 what? I can't even remember the 22.10. But because I, when they eat me guam or sweet me, I just mark it down. 11.10 p.m. Do you see? National Stadium. Right? December 97. Did you see that? Right? I said, promote me to very great honor and do anything that I say. I have to be careful. I must not say negative things again, though. No. Are you getting me? So I started searching. Who and who does God promote to great honor? How will he do it? Mom, one day my heart just saw it there in 1 Timothy 5.17. He said, let the 
Can somebody read it for us? First Timothy five seventeen. Can somebody read it for us? Who is there? Oh, a little bit slow. Can somebody read it for us? First Timothy five seventeen. Read it for us. Church, praise the Lord. First Timothy chapter five from verse seventeen. Yeah. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double, double honor. honor. Yeah. Especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. Okay, read it again. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of the double honor, especially they who labor in the word and, and doctrine. doctrine. <laughs> Great honor, double honor. That let them be counted worthy of double honor. Great honor, especially those who labor in the word and the doctrine. Oh my. So if I labor in the word and doctrine of my business, then I'm going to make it big. Because I saw it in Proverbs too. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the one that gets understanding that if you do merchandise, are you getting me? The merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver. That you will gain more money than person where they sell gold. Ah, then if that's the case, then what I know, the little I know, why don't we put it together into seminar? But when I was going through seminars, I said, okay, so I'm going to do seminars, no doubt about it. But one day God just showed me again. Think we're bored. Isaiah 37. Is that somebody who's going to go to that place? Isaiah 37. If you read it, it'll be funny. He said the Egyptian will help you, but in vain, but to no purpose. Oh, can somebody read it for me? Isaiah 37. You see, now that I'm using 1 Corinthians 2:10 now, I know the thing where they switch me. Okay, can I read? Yeah, read. For the Egyptians shall help Slow. in vain and to no purpose. Okay. Therefore, have I cried concerning this? this. Okay. Their strength is to sit still. still. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh, continue now. Okay. The next verse. He said, "Now, yeah. Now go, write it before them in a table. Okay. And note it in a book, that, that it may be for the time to come, forever and ever." Did you see that? Now, in my book here, what did I, what did I write here? October. No, read it. October what? October 21. No, October what? No. Okay. October 21. No, 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 no. Oh, no, the one of, after October, what is it? October, October what? 97. October 97. So he said, nobody will help you, give you money for loan. No. Your strength is to sit down on one spot. Bam. Now go, write this thing before them on a table and note it in a book so that will be for generations to come. 97, we sit there inside a room. Most of the books people are buying now world over, we wrote it in that one room apartment. Oh. Madam, your home might be business, your home might be sculpture, but my job today is to let you see how God deals with you one by one. Do you see how the thing they switch me comparing this to that? So you must mark your Bible when God speaks to you, when that thing switch you. You don't have to be on a mountain for that to happen. It's an every morning affair. Day unto day show you mysteries, while night unto night show it you knowledge. But when you wake up in the morning, in Habakkuk, he said, I will stand on my watch. Mom, it's 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. You better do it before the Muslims wake up, so that, because at that time, heaven is jammed, though, for the angels to even sort you out from the Hindu, the Buddhist, the Muslim, it will take time. So you better wake up a little bit early. I will sit on the rampant and watch. I set myself on the table and watch what he will say to me. And the Lord will say to me, write the vision, make it plain on the table so that you can read as you write it. But I wasn't smart then. But one man saw me and said, you guy, you look like you know what you're doing. You know, I was experimenting with fish. And I said, can you come and preach in my church? I said, me, come and preach in your church. Okay? Inside my one room. And even Okada, I know they won't carry me, said, because we asked me, said, do you have enough money to pay? But all they said, he said, don't, don't come. You don't need to talk. Just write what you want to say. Come and impart our youth. So they called me to First Baptist Church, 1997. All of you are going to have access to this information on my on my on my on my YouTube later on. Let me show you quickly. <laughs> Very funny. Now, when they now told me that, they said I should come and tell the young ones vision because I started telling people, look, I'm going to be a big fisherman. I wrote it down on it. It's a pity I didn't bring the that cardboard 
one ugly looking cardboard but i wrote i wrote everything i want to do between now till i'm 100 years old one by one i painted it it looks so rough but i don't know i forgot when i was coming <laughs> it's okay now but when i got to that church they said i should come and speak about vision everybody called that word vision now i wrote almost six pages so i should teach them how to succeed me we come from inside my executive toilet kitchen bedroom put together took more away to idumota from idumota I can't take okada you know reach the church with my tattered stuff for my belt you have to use more rope you can't talk in because the belt is a sorry side but that's when i i preach this sermon you can assess it i'll tell you where to assess it later because i told my my uh, one of my staff to to publish it look at this was december 1997 december 1997 right now what did i tell them okay you want to see december 1997 by Ademu Wade december 1997 now nothing deal i just talk they make mouth in the lord are you getting me and i told them i said what is your vision i, was, I said vision is that compelling conviction that determines where you are headed to it is that tangible expression of your purpose that will ignite your passion for progress because where there's no vision people perish i begin to talk like man of god you know that kind of thing <laughs> now one thing i want to let you see here is that what opportunities for work or ministry do i feel strongly about what needs am i as an individual i am in a unique position to meet in the church that's why i said i can't be a deacon you know? i just like to stay as a brother because if i'm a deacon i won't be here with you today i'll be compelled to stay in my church but this one i'm blessing the whole world the whole christian world. of course we are one body isn't it but i saw that because i know my own position is unique so they say ah this man you are so great oh they say i'm so great with my tata dress oh so the nurse i should come the following month to take them again at that time the adults in the church came and they said i should talk about mission statement let me read for you what i concluded on that mission and goal that time the picture of what I want to do is already showing up. I said, a man will have one vision and one mission, but he's going to have many goals. For example, God blessed me by giving me my life's vision, which progressive generation of one billion naira by the year 2060. That time, one billion. We know they hear that word plenty, like the way I hear him now, you know. Now, <laughs> for the propagation of the end time gospel so i expect when i came here and i said ah god one day shall i'll be able to have enough cash to just say i bet nobody then nobody contribute again make nago build bride support in a quiet bomb but let me just finish this one on my own and so shall it be in jesus name Amen. and so shall it be for everyone here in jesus name Amen. that's what i was thinking even though gary and cowbell five cobble was my companion then and all this Jomo Vita, you know, all those Vita Vita, you remember that time? When I said a small sand and small this thing that could put in there, you know. Now, let me read something for you. I said, I saw a whole ship being loaded with the Bible for free distribution to people who have been deprived of hearing the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. I now committed myself to the fulfillment of that vision. Then I had a mission. This is to set up a company that will disseminate fish, protein, skill, and technology to the world's hungry saints. Now, to pursue that mission requires a program of goals, including seven areas, finding a, a place to, uh, to, 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 to hear the word of God, as in Matthew 6, 33, and to be of service in the household of God by teaching in the church children's unit, as in Matthew 23, 11. I said, that's my spiritual goal. I learned that from that book. After that, I said, to read about three to five books a week to understand the word of God, as in Daniel 9, verse 2, and to be aware or to be aware of new things in the fish world proverbs 10 14 plus writing articles to motivate and benefit mankind educational goal building friendship with my wife as in ephesians 5 25 that's when i know i can never fight my wife till jesus comes i learned that in ephesians 5 25 and then with people who can share my vision and mission ezekiel 31 verse 4 to 5 some people can you can just beam this later on okay what i would do this paper I'm going to put it on a blog or maybe I'll talk to Shelly how the church can take some parts of it and use it to bless somebody 
you see how goals are. If not you, let your child. This is the way to grow. Are you getting me? And I said, with people who could share my vision and mission, social goal. At the same time, working at a specialized fish center to master all the small, small things for the takeoff of the fish business. Are you getting me? In preparation for the takeoff of the aquatic conglomerate, whose profit will gradually be almost totally endowed to carry on the work of the Lord through a trust foundation that will set up. You see, God loves to hear things like that. Some of you go just chop the whole thing and get serious by writing it down. Are you getting me? And that's how God began to give me wisdom in that area. You see, I wrote it down. I even have one on planning and prioritizing. So, how did it now lead to this? To this fish thing? I'll show you one or two things now. While I was outside, after a short service like this, somebody is going to get a miracle today in Jesus' name. I was reading a book called The Militant, the Militant Church. Okay, before then, look at this. Maybe they will just show you. Small time, I begin paint picture. I said I didn't bring the big signboard, like a calendar like this. But if you look at this, can you beam it? You see, June... 1996, the Great Commission Ministry. So what I will do from the age of 35 to when I'm 85, Abby, now I'm 52. Then I wrote there, phase one, salesmanship. You know, I shared that with you on Wednesday. Selling goods, selling services, and selling idea. Did you see that? And I said phase two, right? Phase two is uh, what? Uh, seminars. Okay, no. Where's phase two here? Yeah. Uh, phase two, okay. Merchandising building an aquarium shop, aquaculture shop, even fish supermarkets. Then I said phase three, farming, and then equipping other people to know how to do it. Catfish farming, tilapia farming, goldfish, koi, and co. Can you see that? Then phase four, consolidation. Government are even calling us to come and help them with cage culture now. You see, all what I wrote here, that's of our days, oh. You see, they happen one by one. Can somebody clap for Jesus? Now, why I brought this for you? I don't know if your case can be as serious as mine. Though. Somebody that had 45 to 50 staff because you want your wife and baby to survive. You now found yourself inside somebody's... The man had buttons. He's an importer. I met him somewhere. And he now said, I told him my story. And I said, oh, I have a place. So I believe God for just 12,000 naira then. I'll be like, Is it? 8,000 naira for accommodation, one room. Until I saw that man who gave me free room. He told me to be washing his car. Sometimes my wife would be crying because leave will fall on top of the car before he wakes up. He goes, Wait, what? You have not washed his car? <laughs> I said, Don't worry. It's just a face. It was in those places that we wrote all of this. But what's more important, you know, I want to bless people. I just saw this particular stuff. I read one book, The Militant Church. Can we call that word? The militant church. You can look for it. This man here, they call him Lester Sombra. Now, he, I saw this man. He's a white man, but I saw the way he was helping African countries. People who are hungry. Can somebody come and be my... Just a bit hold this. I saw the way he was feeding Africans. Now, you can, you can beam on it. Say, so what? A, a, a white missionary, hungry people... You know, it's the one I told you of on Thursday that he said God told him it was 80 something that he should start Joseph End Time Feed the Hungry program. And I saw that that's him, Lester Sombra. So he told the church they bought a big trailer. Everybody will bring excess food in his house. They will not take it to Liberia. They will take it to Rwanda. I said, ah, ah, why can't we be the one to do this ourselves? Inside my one room, you see, it's like the person day. <laughs> you better be drunk in the Lord. Are you getting me? Until they say, it'd be crazy that to think that's the word, permit me to use that word, to, to think that I will be having to buy, to get money to buy this book, no be small thing, 220 naira, Easter Sunday, 1996. Because it will show on the money for food for the week. But I was just keeping up my dream. And I said, I will want to be a representative of this man. So what I did, when I saw his picture on a magazine, I just tear the I just, I tear the stuff. I said, God. It's, the man said he's old. He said, God said he will put it in the heart of some people to make it happen. Then I said, God, use me. Oh. Me, I like that. Oh. So I put his picture here. When I put his picture here in front of my Bible, the man died 
five months later. I said, well, it's okay. He don't die, fine. But me, far, far away, he has put that spirit inside me to God's glory. And I'm going to make sure I make Africans be the ones that will feed the whole world in the next few years to come. Now, so you see, it's a, so that's why we wrote that book, Catfish Fingerlings Production. It took 10 years for God to make me know because they don't teach you in the university. Tell your child to go to university. Now my book, some of the lecturers used to, now we'll be teaching them. Sometimes it will take three months. The one that took just two hours there. So when you see secrets going out, now God now began to reveal secrets to make it easy for me because I said, disseminate fish protein, then skill, and then technology. You remember now how technology begins to show up? Because